So there's a couple of things I wanted to talk to you all about. Um, first of all, um, uh, Kevin and I uh, have been watching some different shows on TV. So we've been watching, um, I don't even know what it's called, but we've been watching, I think it's like Traffic Cops in the UK. And that's what it is. It is Traffic Cops. It's not like an episode of Cops in America because Cops in America deals with mainly them going on calls to people's houses and stuff like that. I mean, they deal with everything. But this traffic police is mainly problems with traffic. Um, but somebody was on there the other night and they said uh, that they had been charged. Uh, they, The police officer asked him, have you ever been arrested before? And he said, yes. And he said, what for? And the guy said, I think he pronounced it Afray, 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 A-F-F-R-A-Y, and Kevin and I were both like, what is that? What, what is Afray? It's fighting, but we don't use that word here. Um, I mean, I think it is a word here, of course, but we, it's not something that we use here. So that, that, why wouldn't you just say fighting? I don't know why you would, I don't know. It's just, that was odd to us. Um, something else that we noticed that they say, instead of saying, uh, if they tell somebody to get out of the car, if they tell them, instead of saying, get on the ground, they'll say, get on the floor. So, we, when we're refer referring to get on the floor, well, you're inside a building. You're, the floor is inside a building. So, uh, we have floors in our house, floors in our building. But anything outside is the ground. So even if it's uh, the pavement, it's still the ground. So we would say get on the ground. So it's just weird to us for them to say get on the floor because that's not the floor. This is the floor in this house. So uh, that's different. And then um, uh, something else that I've noticed, and I've noticed it a lot um honestly i've noticed it recently i think because i'm on TikTok, and i get to listen to people all over the united states i've noticed that americans and i guess this is totally regional but my whole life growing up we would say if you were going to call in sick we would say you're going to call in I'm calling in. I'm going to call in to work. I'm calling in sick. Other Americans in all parts of the country say, I'm going to call out. To me, that's completely foreign. Um, who calls out? But, but they're, you know, to me, calling out is, I'm calling out. You know, I'm calling out, you know not calling out to work. It, to me, it's, it, it's always been calling in. So on TikTok, when they say uh, so-and-so called out, and it's like, gosh, that sounds so weird. But I've also heard them say that in um, the United Kingdom as well. So I just thought that was, anytime we notice differences like that, um, you know, different names of foods or just different uh, ways of saying things, I always want to bring it up because um, I think other people find it interesting as well. Um, we finished the first season of American Horror Story, uh, Murder House, because we did not watch it. There were only two seasons that we have uh, did not watch. We didn't watch Murder House and we didn't watch Hotel. We watched like the first two episodes of Hotel and it was just so graphic, I guess, that neither one of us wanted to stick with it, but we might watch it. Now that we've watched Murder House, um, I was completely fine with it. It hasn't bothered me at all like it did when I first saw it. And my sister said, it's because you've gotten used to living in the house. She said, you're used to living in that big house now, so that's why I didn't bother you. That might be true. Um, but for me, there were 12 episodes, I think. I'm pretty sure there were 12 episodes. 
were there 12 episodes of 12. 12. For me, the most shocking episode, and I won't tell you anything in case you haven't seen it, the most shocking episode was 10. Because you find out something in episode 10, and that was the most shocking part of the, the series. Um, and I thought it was good. I really did. I, I thought it was a good season. I enjoyed, um, I enjoyed the people in it. I enjoyed the house, all that. I thought it was very, very good. Um, in last week's, in last Monday's vlog, I told you that we um, had worked our way through Unsolved Mysteries. They only posted six ep the first six episodes on Netflix. And like I said then, I think they're going to post the remainder later on in the year. I don't know why they decided to do it that way, but they did. So, Unsolved Mysteries, I really liked it. Uh, but, since we finished that, we've been watching one called Cold Case Files. And I honestly like it more than Unsolved Mysteries. And I'll tell you why. Because there's, I've watched three Cold Case Files so far, and, and I'm, I don't, I'm assuming they're all going to be like this. They have a resolution to them. So, it's something that's happened, just like with Unsolved Mysteries, something bad's happened. And with Unsolved Mysteries, there is no resolution. They are looking to the public. They are pleading with the public, if you know anything, please call us and let us know what you know. Uh, please help us. With cold case files, it is something that's happened. And from the ones that I've watched, it's been like, there was like a 30 year span or something, but you get resolution at the end of these episodes. You find out who did it, when they did it, why they did it, you know, you know. And so for me, I like that even better. So now I will absolutely watch Unsolved Mysteries when it comes on, when they release the rest of the episodes, I'll watch it. But if you like Unsolved Mysteries and you've not watched Cold Case Files, watch it. It's um, because I think it's just nice to have that uh, resolution at the end of the episodes. And, and Kevin's enjoying it too. Um, something else that I talked about in the, uh, the Sunday vlog was our plans for upstairs. So, we, um, I told you we had not done anything yet because, um, we've known for over a month that Ashley was going to move out. And with Ashley's stuff being packed and all that stuff, you don't want to have somebody come over to your house and, and you don't want to have a contractor come to your house. You don't want to have an appraiser come to your house. You don't want to have anybody come to your house with boxes everywhere. But what, when we moved in, we had the kitchen renovation. In order to get the kitchen renovation, we got a second mortgage on the house. So what we plan to do in order to do work upstairs is we, um, we have the money saved, we can now pay off the second mortgage. We've been paying on it monthly all this time, but we have the money to where we can pay it off, and we're gonna pay off that second mortgage, and we're going to um, get, what is uh, just a new second mortgage, is that what it's called? A new loan to do work to the upstairs. So, in order to do that, in order to get that new loan, you have to get your house appraised. So, today, the this morning, the appraiser came over. And right now, for some reason, I don't know why, but our bank is offering to do that. They're paying for it. So, we didn't have to pay any money at all. So, whether... Free closing costs. Free closing costs, yeah. So, whether we decide to use any of the money or not, if we change our minds and decide not to use it at all... We'll have gotten a free appraisal um, on the house. So, the guy came over this morning and he went through all the rooms and looked around. And um, so, he said that we would probably have that by the end of the week. So, when he, when we find out how much the house is worth, then you can 
get a loan for um, up to a certain amount of what your house is worth. So um, then we'll know just how much money we're working with and then we'll be able to call, call a contractor because we haven't even called, called anybody at all. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, we would like to put a bathroom upstairs because it's more involved than that and it's more involved than what I've even told you all because I, if we, once we call somebody in, once we figure out uh, what we can afford to do, then I will go, I will go through it step by step with you all because I want to, of course, have a before and after video, you know, we'll film the whole thing and, um, I do not look forward to it, to be honest. I, I, the end product is nice, just like with the kitchen. It was totally worth it. And it really didn't take that long, to be honest. We started the kitchen renovation at the end of July one year. That's when we physically started, like, taking cartons down and things like that. At the end of July, the kitchen was finished by the end of October. I don't think that's bad at all um, and and the only reason I remember it was on Halloween is because we ordered our kitchen table from Wayfair and we had it came in a box and Kevin had to put it assemble everything and the box was sitting out in the living room when Andrew and Christina came in on Halloween with Gavin because Gavin that was uh, Gosh, that was one of his first Halloweens. But anyway, that's why I remember it. It's because I just, I remember that box sitting out there on Halloween. And that was the last thing that we had to do was put the table and, and chairs together. So, I don't think that's long at all. I, for some reason, I have it in my head that this is going, what we want to do, um, putting a bathroom upstairs, I think it's going to take longer. I could be wrong, but I, I feel like it's going to take a long time. What I don't look forward to is all the, the dust. And because anytime you're talking about gutting a room and pulling wall, I, we're talking about pulling the plaster off the walls. Um, then you're talking about dust and dirt and just, <laughs> I don't look forward to that at all. But now, I'll, I'll look forward, of course, to the end result. That'll be really, really nice. So I got this box in my P.O. box uh, today. It is from Like Air and it's baked puff corn. So, oh, okay. So there's butter and salt, pancake. Oh, that sounds awesome. American cheddar and another pancake. So they have three different kinds in here. Uh, so that will be awesome. I cannot wait to try these. The company had contacted me and asked if I would like to try them. And I said, absolutely. Um, we, uh, we really love the puff corns that we have tried. Uh, so I can't wait to review these. So I figured I would show you how they look out of the bags. Uh, they all say that they're new. They're proudly made in the USA and they're really good sized bags. It's only 50 calories a cup too. I had just moved uh, the, the other box off the table and this one came and this is from uh, Asthma in Ohio and you all know Asthma because uh, she sells uh, Merle Norman, she owns her own shop and she has sent us so many things, um, so, so many goodies to try. These are gluten-free Heart, Heartville Kettle Potato Chips. I have never seen this brand before. Okay, and we have some cookies. I'm going to wait on the cookies. Hold on. So these are wavy. 
So I guess we have just regular and wavy. And I've never heard of these. I wonder if these are made in Ohio. Uh, they are. They're made in Akron, Ohio. Because Asma lives in Ohio and she, she really tries to support Ohio brands in her shop, which I think is amazing. Uh, so we have never heard of this brand before. So that will be very fun to try. And then Giorgio Cookie Company, Biscotti. Okay, Asma has sent us this Biscotti before, but this is the turtle. We have never had that before. And let's see. Ooh. This is double chocolate walnut, which sounds wonderful. She sent us like uh, like four of these to try in the past, and they were very good. And then these are C. Kruger's Cookies, Unforgettable Baked Goods and Gifts. Uh, let's see. C. Kruger's. Oh, how cute. Uh, this is a Belgian chocolate fudge brownie. Ooh. This is a finest sugar cookie with buttercream icing. That looks so delicate. And it's big, but it's in... It is 2.25 ounces, but it's very light. So I will probably take pictures of these and put them in the refrigerator. Um, I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's it's hot outside. And even though it still is before noon, it's hot. Uh, so I will probably put these in the refrigerator. But thank you so much, Asma, for sending us all these. And I've never heard of this company before or, or either one of these companies. So thank you. So I had to comment, um, as I'm taking pictures of these, I noticed all of these are Ohio companies. So when I said she tries to support Ohio, she really does. So the chips are made in Akron, Ohio. And then the Giorgio Cookie Company is from, I think, Bel Air. Yeah, Bel Air, Ohio. And then the uh, C. Kruger's is from... Um, Columbus, Columbus, Ohio. So I just think that that is well worth noting that she is a business in Ohio and she really, really supports Ohio businesses. We got a box in the P.O. box that says cereal first and oh my goodness. There's a Dunkin' Dan on top. Look at those bowls. Oh, the sippy bowls. Those are the kind where you can drink the milk, aren't they? Oh yeah. my goodness. Let me see. Okay. Duncan. Tammy, we have some exciting news to share. You already know that cereal is the ultimate breakfast go-to, and Americans sure do love their coffee. Hint, a lot. So Post Cereals and Dunkin' have teamed up to create two new cereals made with Dunkin' Coffee. Hitting shelves this August, the new Post Dunkin' Caramel Macchiato and Mocha Latte cereals are a tasty tribute to two of Dunkin' fans' favorite, uh, favorite flavors. Post Dunkin' Caramel Macchiato cereal brings together crunchy cereal pieces and caramel swirled marshmallows to create the deliciously indulgent taste of the layered iced coffee beverage and post Duncan mocha latte cereal features a hint of chocolate and latte swirled marshmallows in honor of its namesake espresso the new cereals contain very small amounts of caffeine roughly a tenth of a cup of coffee so all can indulge in the rich coffee forward experience we hope you're as excited as we are and wanted to be one, I wanted you to be one of the very first to try the newly brewed cereals before they hit stores sh store shelves. Um, this so is the press release. That is awesome. So Dunkin' Caramel Macchiato and Mocha Latte. Oh I'm my goodness! There's it. Oh, what's this? Let me see what this Spoon. is. But first cereal, it says. That's cool. That is so awesome. 
I love that. And then, oh, the shirt. The shirt says, but first, cereal. And it's a long sleeve shirt. It, no, it's a short sleeve shirt. That is nice. That is so, There's so, so uh, nice. Some kind of little tag or something, card or something stuck on it inside. The card, this? Yeah. It just says uh, the uh, DD mobile app. Duncan, load this card for faster checkout. Yeah, so remember, it's a gift. Is it a gift card or a membership card or something? Uh, I have no idea. I truly don't know what that is. Hmm. I do not know. I would have to, I guess I'll have to. It says you, you load it with something. So, so it's probably a gift card. So, I, I, yeah, I don't know. They didn't say that in here, but that is awesome. So this is one of those reviews uh, that one of those uh, food items that I've told you before, if it's something brand new, then I try to get it out first. I try to get it out as quickly as possible. So you will have already seen this video before you ever see this box opening in the vlog, but I still wanted to share it with you because I think it's awesome that they, they sent this to us. We are at Dollar Tree and they have some of their fall stuff out. So they have some stuff over here. This is for like Thanksgiving. The window and to decorate with. Some little things there. And then over here they have like some crafting stuff. I guess if you're gonna make wreaths or, yeah. or lay them on the table or something like that. I would think it's more wreath. Yeah, this looks like wreath stuff, doesn't it? Now they don't have any um they don't have any um, candy out, um, but like that looks like it's for a Halloween tree. They have lots of spiders. And very creepy spiders. Kevin's been playing a game lately with some spiders. What's the name of that game you've been playing? Grounded, I only played it twice. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Is that the one you all didn't really like that much? It was okay, it just didn't have much in it. Yeah. Oh, and they've got these bats. I've never seen those, and they're like unpainted. Yeah. I like the little witch hats. Those are cool, uh, cute. What are those stockings down there? The witch stockings. What do you do with that? Hanging on a doorknob, I guess. Oh. Huh. I don't, I just didn't know what, what the purpose of it was. And then behind me, they have some stuff for um for like school kids like if, if you want to paint they have like these that you can paint now see and we we these are so so adorable we had bought those for ashley in the past and uh, for her children at school but now they are starting um online so she we won't be getting her any of those um, That'd be more advanced. Look how small those are. Oh wow! Well, yeah, that looks like it's for for an adult. But then they also have um, this one. But they have turkeys, the horn of plenty. So that's about all that they have out right now, and they have some flowers over there, placemats, and that's about it. These would be cute to buy for your classroom because you could buy these one time, you get six of them, and if you buy them one time, you could use those year after year for your kids. You, you wouldn't have to, you know, throw them away. We got a package today from Miss Scarlett's, and Asma sent this. Asma had told me she was sending this, um, Asma in Ohio, but Miss Scarlett's is in uh, Pennsylvania. It says Miss Scarlett's Gourmet Coffee fudge and specialty items so this looks like peanut butter fudge oh um and then let's see this looks like cookies and cream mm -hmm. look at that that has a lot of it has oreo cookies in it and it smells wonderful it smells maple. it's yes i do too um this looks like cinnamon it's snickerdoodle maybe doesn't that look like cinnamon that that might be snickerdoodle let's see oh my goodness there's a bunch of these in here this is chocolate i bet this is chocolate peanut, peanut butter. butter yes okay this oh wow look Strawberry at that oh i don't know 
I don't know. Ke Kevin's a better guesser than me. Well, it's pink and white. Mmm. It's um. It smells. It smells like a creamsicle, honestly. Oh, so maybe that's, it's orange. That's what it smells like. It, it just orange. smells like creamsicle. Uh, there's a bunch of these I'm in this here. Camera, so. This looks look just like chocolate. Oh uh, my goodness. This maple. may be maple. It very well could be maple. Um, let's see. Goodness. <laughs> this is a... Uh, chocolate walnut. Uh, yeah, chocolate walnut, which we love chocolate walnut. Um, this looks like strawberry. That looks like a, just a piece of strawberry. I like the packaging. It's different. I do have to say it does come open a little bit um, in the shipping, but I, I really like that. I think it's unique. There's one more in here. <gasps> Ooh, mint chocolate. Ooh, they're letting you know that it's mint. And let me, of course, the very last thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Miss Scarlet's Gourmet Coffee Fudge and Specialty Items. Uh, so I will definitely visit their website, www.miss-scarlets.com, um, and I will look these up to make sure we know what these are. But thank you so much, Asma. I cannot wait to try all these. So I thought some of you may or may not be interested in how much space do I have in the bathroom uh, now that Ashley has moved out. And I'm not bragging because I will never use this space. So um, she could move right back in tomorrow and it wouldn't bother us at all because we have plenty of space for her. So she used, well, first of all, she kept something up here all the time, uh, some drawers. But then both of these, both of these drawers were hers, which they need to be cleaned out, of course. I haven't cleaned out anything. Uh, but both of those were hers, and I will never open those, ever. And then this side has toilet paper in it. But then the other side, this was her side. Once again, have not cleaned it. I need to take a, like a Clorox wipe and wipe it out. But I, I just haven't had a reason to do that because I haven't opened them. Except to get, you know, the right side to get toilet paper. And then... This just has um, the kids. This whole side is Talenti. <laughs> Believe it or not, those are all empty Talenti containers. And the kids actually like to play with those. So um, when the kids spend the night, that is their uh, um, soap for their shampoo. And then these are the only Bath and Body Works um, little hand sanitizers I have. I have an Ocean, Ocean Rain. And then warm vanilla sugar, which you probably can't see. And then a peach bellini. Uh, what I've been doing is the one that I have in my purse. I have been filling with regular hand sanitizer. So um, I have a big bottle of hand sanitizer. So I haven't uh, needed to open those in a while. So she didn't use this space at all. These do not open. These are under the sink. And they're just, they, they look like drawers, but they're not. The only drawer that I have is here. And there's where my makeup is right there. So that's all that I use right there. And then this up here, um, she, um, this was full of like uh, lotions and Bath and Body Works shower gels and stuff like that. And, of course, all that's gone. All of her perfumes, all that stuff was up there. This uh, is a shelf that we share, and it just has Q-tips and pads and stuff like that. And then, these were absolutely full of makeup and curlers, curling irons. Um, gosh, she had a ton of extra makeup. Uh, she had containers in here of all kinds of stuff. And now, I just kept, um, I kept one hair dryer, because I very rarely use it. I kept a curling iron, and I very rarely use it. And I kept a couple of towels. And the reason I kept a couple of towels was because when I shave my legs in here, I like to put a towel down on the floor. And the kids, when the kids spend the night, um, they use the towels. So, these are hand towels that get switched out every week and there's nothing down here at all 
So tons, tons and tons of space. And all of these tiles could, could truly, these, I'll probably move them now that I'm thinking about it. I'll probably move all these tiles up here. And this is the shower curtain that was in the other bathroom. And I told you all, I guess about a week ago that I took the shower curtain down because we don't use it. And it didn't dawn on me. The reason that I used a shower curtain and the liner at our old house is because we only had one rod at our old house. So on that one rod, you either moved it back or forth and it was open or closed. In this house, we have two rods. So you don't have to, you can move one or the other. And so that's why I only use the liner in this house. I, I, it didn't dawn on me until I was uh, thinking about it later. There was a reason why I used both in our old house. So anyway, I'll probably move all those towels up here. Um, and then I'll probably have uh, two shelves completely empty. But, but I just wanted to show you how much room I have, how much space. And like I said, she could move back in tomorrow and it would be fine because I'm never going to touch those drawers that she left if empty anyway. So I have actually have three empty um, shelves <laughs> because I fit. I put the, um, the hair dryer and the curling iron back there in the back because I never, ever, ever use them. And so I put them in the back under a towel and I fit all the towels here. And um, yeah, so all these are empty except for Mr. Chapel just came in here. <laughs> what are you doing, Chapel? What are you doing, Chapel? Huh? He likes to lay in here sometimes when it's empty. I just have to make sure that the door doesn't accidentally get shut because I would never hear him if he was crying, probably. For the end of the vlog this week, um, I have three lists that we have compiled for you. Uh, the first one, I brought visuals. So I beat Kevin for this one because I have visuals. You Kevin, might as well do your whole list because we're not going to have any of the same books. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, these are our favorite books. Now, if I were to list my favorite authors, there would be some different names thrown into the mix. Mine would too. But these are favorite books so um you want me to do mine first i can't imagine us having any of the same books okay we don't read the same kind of books, My, with the it's, exception it's of a just couple. nice for me to give one and you to that's give fine. one okay i mean they're gonna jump back and forth but that's okay my number 10 is called rebecca and i do not have the original dust jacket for this book because it was it's it's very very old uh, i first read this book probably in middle school uh yeah this book is from 1942 uh but it was written by uh, daphne du Maurier, and i absolutely love it they made a movie out of it if you've ever seen it, black and white movie excellent book my number 10 is dune by frank herbert so it's not doom. It's doom. D-U-N-E. Oh, doom. D-U-N-E. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking D-O-O-M. Doom. No, doom. Doom. Okay. D and who wrote it? Frank Herbert. And is that, what kind of a book is that? Science fiction. All mine science are science fiction. fiction. Okay. Uh, well, a couple of them are science fiction, but that that's number 10 on my list. That's, that's, that's really good. Okay. My number nine is uh, Philippa Gregory, and this is A Wide Acre. And uh, there are, uh, uh, I think this was a, I'm pretty sure it's a trilogy, and I own all of them. Uh, but Philippa Gregory is a wonderful author, and you will be seeing another book of hers in just a few minutes. So that's my number nine. Those are good books. Uh, my number nine is The Red Planet by Robert A. Heinlein. And that's, that's good, another science fiction. It's all, I told you they're all science yeah. fiction. Yeah. And with the exception, maybe two. My number eight is yeah. a Stephen King. It's The Shining. I love The Shining. Uh, now, um, I also love uh, The Stand, but I was thinking about all of his books. I also love Pet Cemetery. Out of all his books, I just, I really love The Shining. I, I, the whole story of it, and it just, it's, it's a it's a spooky book if you read the book it's it's i think much different than even watching the movie so i've only read that book one time and that was all pages ago so we're on eight 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 my uh, my eight is ring world which is a science fiction uh by larry Niven. not ring worm ring world <laughs> and it's really good i've, I've read it uh, two or three times actually 
Kevin doesn't think I'm funny. You can tell. <laughs> just, um, my number seven is Angela's Ashes, uh, Frank McCourt. This is an awesome book. Kevin loves it. I love it. Ashley loves it. Ashley's read it many times as well. Um, he, uh, Frank McCourt wrote this one and then he wrote one called Tiz and he wrote one called uh, Teacher Man. Uh, I don't think I've read those. I think I just read that. This, we own all of them. And that, that's a movie too. Yes, this was a movie as well, but Angela's Ashes, absolutely phenomenal book and it has its funny moments as well. A terrific, terrific book. Mm -hmm. So, love it. Uh, my number seven is Stranger in a Strange Land, which is like a classic. Some of these are from like the 40s. Um, it's Robert Holman too. Okay. Uh, my number, what are we on? Six? Six. Is V.C. Andrews, Flowers in the Attic. You probably thought it would be higher because for years... No, that's, that's a good book too. For, uh, for years, this was one of my very, very favorite books Yeah, ever. but you're, you've went away from those kind of books and read different things now, so... Right. Yeah. Uh, but I still love uh, Flowers in the Attic. It is a classic. It is a, it's, a, it's like a psychological type yeah, book. kind of psychological thriller. Kevin's kind of. read all these. It's Ash a mind game. The whole thing's a mind game, family game, really. Yeah, Ashley's read all of these as well. Uh, this is something that the whole family's read it. Uh, they're a, uh, I've given these books away to uh, as gifts uh, to people because I think the, the whole series is an excellent series. And there's also a movie from that. But you could, all, that whole series was made. You there. could watch the movie, but I would prefer if you're going to do something that you read the book because the end of this movie it does not end like the book. No, nothing so the, like it. So nothing could happen after correctly, like it happens in the books because they didn't end the movie correctly. So I mean, they just ruined it. So I would read the book. About I agree. The book it. was and it's an much easy, better. easy read. Uh, my number six is I Robot which uh, by, is Isaac Asimov, uh, and it's nothing like the movie. The movie is like 90% different. Was that a Will Smith movie? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the movie is nothing to do with the book. So if you've never read the book, but you kind of like the premise of the movie, then, then read the book. You'll like it. My number five, it's not this book in particular. It's any book by Agatha Ray, uh, by um, M.C. Beaton. Uh, Agatha Raisin is her uh, one of her characters. M.C. Um, Beaton, if, if we were to do a list of favorite authors, she would definitely be um, one of my favorite authors. As a matter of fact, uh, she died, but apparently she wrote a book uh, before she died because I just had Kevin pre-order it for me from Amazon. It comes out in November. So there's at least going to be one more book by M.C. Beaton. Um, but she has, uh, just like Agatha Christie, has a main uh, female and male character. M.C. Beaton has a main female and male character, and uh, so any of her books, I just picked this one up, um, Agatha Raisin and the Haunted House, but any of her books are fantastic. If you like a good murder mystery, that's what all of these are. Um, my number five is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. I've heard uh, of that, Hitchhiker. It's very Was wild. that a book? I mean, a movie? Yeah, it, was, it was a movie, too. But okay, was, a movie. It was an okay movie. I didn't get to watch all of it. I think I watched a little over half of it, and then something happened, and I never got back to it. I, oh. never, I never have watched the rest of it. It was, I like the book a lot better. Uh, That's my, a classic. I mean, you're talking about something from way back. Right. Uh, my number four is uh, another Philippa Gregory. It is The Other Bolin Girl. And Philippa Gregory would definitely be on my list of favorite authors. You can pick up any Philippa Gregory book, and I think that I think you're gonna like it. Mm, I, I think good. they will they'll draw you in. Uh, Kevin's read a lot read, of her books. I read that one series. I'm ready of the other ones. You read uh, a Bolin. respectable trade. Oh, the respectable trade was a good. The, a respectable yeah. trade is. Uh, it's an offshoot from all of our other series. Right, so. and uh, but she uh, she's just an, an incredible author, and even though uh, she has fictionalized the story, it is based off 
real events uh, in that time and the tutors and uh, so she's Yeah, done, the details are made up, but the overarching story is, is, is real. all real. Yeah. And the events that happened and the people that were in the Tower of London and things like that and the places and all that and the names that you hear mentioned will all be familiar names to you. So any of her books are, are terrific. And my next one's a trilogy. It's actually three books, but I mean, you can't read one without having all three of them. Uh, it's the Night Angel trilogy, and it's by Brent Weeks. And actually, uh, I, number four for me, and Andrew likes his books too. Actually, Andrew's the one that told me about them. Oh, really? Yeah, they're really good. He's an assassin. So he's a good assassin. So it's not a, a science fiction. Uh, it's more fantasy. Book. It's okay. more fantasy than science fiction. My number three is. Agatha Christie. And the reason I'm showing you Halloween Party is because this was the first Agatha Christie book that I ever read. I found this book at a um, at the public library at a book sale and I picked it up because I thought it was a neat looking cover. All of her covers are really, really cool. Um, but any Agatha Christie book, if you like a murder mystery, they are terrific. And uh, even though they were written a long, long time ago, um, they still, it doesn't, they don't read like they were written a long time ago. Didn't, um, didn't they make a movie over that one? Oh, they made movies out of all of these, uh, all of her. This, like, this book is from 1970. That's, it was first published in 1969, but then this one was from 1970. So I wasn't even born at that time, but uh, there's nothing in these that's, that would really date it you know it's it's your basic murder mystery and so uh not a lot of fancy stuff in there but i love them oh, i love to read the science fiction books because the computers are you know right the, even back in the 50s and 60s they did pretty good at, with science fiction but they never would have dreamed of like handheld cell phones you right. know that's like see a murder that's like mystery. so far uh, but but it's still fun to you know their idea of computers back then were big huge room sized computers right. So when they think about computers, they even scale down to where it's on a desktop for them was like, wow, that's science fiction. Right. And nowadays we're thinking, you know, our, our phones are 10,000 times the exactly. computer that, that those were. So that's just fun. But, but for a murder mystery, you know, you're going to poison someone or They're shoot someone. It's kind of timeless. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. It's, it's, it is timeless. What was that we watched the other night and you said... We were watching some show and they, oh, I know what it was. It was that one with the time. Oh, uh, um, Dark. It was called Dark on Netflix and we watched the first season and this guy goes back in time and he has his cell phone in his pocket and this this guy that, what were they, like in the 50s or something, yeah. he pulls this out of his pocket it looks at like and, he, and it, he lights it up and it's like, um, it shows a picture of his family on there and Kevin said imagine if you were to go back in time and, and somebody saw your phone I mean they would it's just amazing you know yeah, they would think you were from, from the future they would think you were an alien yeah an alien yeah oh. okay right. sorry what number are you on number three uh, yeah three. my number three is The Stand by Stephen King I really like the movie and the book and I've read that I've probably read that ten times and we've and mentioned that book. before when we did like our top 10 Stephen Kings, I th both of us had that on our yeah. list uh, yeah. because it, it it's truly it's a good, it's a good book. A, and a there's enough detail book. to where it's interesting, but there's not enough, there's not so much detail where it gets bogged down. Right. I mean, Stephen King likes to bog down some areas of his books anyway, they kind of slow down, but that one's pretty good pace. It's, it's an easy read. It's very, very interesting. Yep, it's interesting. Um, a, a really good book. My number two is uh, J.K. Rowling. It's Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. So, of course, if you are going to read the Harry Potter series, you need to start with the first one. That makes sense. But out of her series, my favorite book out of the series is the Chamber of Secrets. I love it. This is the one you're introduced to Moaning Myrtle, and you're introduced to a lot of new things. Mm -hmm. But... I love this one. That was a good so, one. That's not my favorite one, but it's a good one. Is, do you have her? I don't have Harry Potter on mine. So J.K. Rowling isn't in your... Wow. No. Uh, mine are, I told you mine were all pretty well, much science true. fiction. Because yeah. that's what I would prefer over science fiction and fantasy than anything. Right. Much. Uh, my number two is the Dark Tower series by Stephen King. I like 
like those too. Yeah. I, um, I do like those books. I say the series, and all honestly, my favorites are probably the second one and the Wizards of Glass. Those are my, probably my two favorites. But I haven't read. I read the whole series not that long ago. Well, within the past five or six years. But he finished that series, and right. I haven't read that since it came out. Because I read when I knew that one was coming out, the final book. I started reading all of them again, and then I read through the whole series from beginning to end. Um, I still like the second and the Wizard of Glass. I can't remember which. That's like five or six. That is one of those series where, honestly, I hate to say it, but you really just need to get past the the first book. The first book is kind of slow. The first and book kind was of weird. Not that great. No, but it sets up the rest of the book. It does. So, so you so have to read it. Just make it make yourself get yes, through it. Yes, it's kind of like <laughs> I've told you all before. I've talked about Six Feet Under. It's like okay, you need to watch like three episodes before you. Re and even Mind Hunter, if you've ever seen Mind Hunter, it's the same type thing. Seinfeld. You, you need to watch a yeah. You need to watch a couple of episodes before you get into it. With the Dark Tower series, you need to get past that first book. Yeah. And the rest of them. Get and, much better. Yes, yes. So just know that if you've read the first book and you're like, oh, gosh, I don't understand what they're finding interesting, you have to get past that first book. And my very, very favorite is Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> and this, That's a collection. And this is a collection of uh, stories. This one has A Study in Scarlet, The Sign of the Four, The Hound of the Baskervilles, The Valley of Fear. Any any of the Sherlock Holmes are my very, very favorites. But if you were paying attention, I love murder mysteries. So um, M.C. Beaton, Agatha Christie, I love those. Uh, there's another author that I didn't even have in here. Um, her name is Mary Daham. I, I, I think that's how you pronounce her name. She writes a really good set of uh, mystery books, but murder mysteries, that's what I like. So, and if they take place in the United Kingdom, that's a bonus. So. <laughs> my, my number one is by Arthur C. Clarke. It's, it's the Rama series, R-E-M-A. Uh, there's a bunch of books in that. I think there's four, three or four books in that series. Um, I have literally read that series probably 20 times. Oh, really? Yeah, I love them. I love those books. Um, and I, 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 don't, I don't read them one after the other, you know. So, and they're not... They're, they're the small paperbacks. They're not like the really thick ones. Oh. So, um, so by the time, well, some of them may be thick. I don't know. I read them on ebook readers nowadays, so you never know how thick something is. But um, every time I read them, I forget. Oh, yeah, I forgot that happens, or I forgot that happens. The only, I, I do have an honorable mention, and I can't remember what the name of them, uh, the books are. That's why I didn't. Uh, who wrote the Dianetics books? Um, L. Ron Hubbard. L. Ron Hubbard writes another series. There's 10 of them. It's the first 10 series of books that were ever written. I can't think of what they're called. Oh. Uh, and I've read them a bunch of times. If read Dr. Those four Dan times. is watching this, I'm sure he will comment because he I just is can't a think. bookworm. I can, I can look it real, up real quick. Yeah, um, he, he is a bookworm and um, he... I don't know why. It's, it's escaping my brain. I'll tell you who else is a bookworm too is John. John is a bookworm as well. He, he likes to read a lot too. I... Um, I'll be able to tell you. This. Something that you know, an offshoot of this. I like a man that likes to read. I like that. I think that's impressive. I think it's good that if, if men like to read and use their mind and, and I think that's wonderful. I think, um, I think some uh, boys aren't raised to read and I don't know why that's the case. Um, no, but I've always read. Yeah, I've just My always, dad read, yeah, I've always been impressed with read. Now, what did your dad read? Because he likes to watch westerns. Mission Earth. That's what I, didn't, I didn't even have to find it. It's, oh, okay. Mission yeah. Earth is a series. There's ten of them. Um, they are goofy, funny. You feel sorry for this guy, but you also hate him. I mean, it's just they're just there's really good books. Matter of fact, I didn't even own one of the books for many years because I couldn't find it anywhere. Right. So I would just skip it and just keep going. <laughs> It was like number five. And then you finally got it. And I finally well, I got ebook readers now. Right. So I just got it. So yeah, but I would read like one through four, skip the fifth one because I didn't have it, and right. read six through ten. And it's like, I always wondered. I mean, you know kind of what's happened between one and the other because right. of what's happening in the sixth book. But then it's like... That would be um, a shame. I would like the details of how it got to this point. And, but for years... That would be like having... I a mean, I literally read that series at least twice without ever having that book. Yeah, that's crazy. And then I finally found that. Because that would be uh, like having 
the VC Andrews, the flowers in the attic, there's like four or five books, and, and then you're just missing skip the, one. You're missing you'd be like, like the second one. What the heck happened yeah. in that time? So That's what books did your dad read? Did he read Western books? Like no, he, he likes science fiction. He likes science fiction yeah. too. He's the one that got me into a lot of the ones I like. Oh, because so. I know that's what he's always watching on TV. Yes, yeah. so I think Cal he had. Picture. I think he had westerns that he read, but that wasn't what he he primarily read fiction. I mean, right. science fiction. Right. Okay. The next list we have is Halloween. So these are our. We did twelve. Our top twelve favorite Halloween movies. Now you won't hear things like The Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, because yeah. That's Those not a movie, that's a TV show. And I didn't specifically make this a horror. This isn't this isn't necessarily Halloween happened in this movie or even it was around Halloween time. It's just for movies you'd watch around during that time. Which for, tends to lead to scary movies. For some reason, it's just they give off a Halloween vibe. Oh, they're just scary. So they might not necessarily be. Halloween movies, but to us, in our opinion, they're a Halloween movie. So my number 12 is Halloween Town. Oh, yeah, that's, that's cute. And those are, there's a, there's a, several of either. those uh, movies. And yes, they're just good, clean They are, I mean, anybody movies. can watch those. Yes. Um, kind of like... Um, you know what I should have put on this list, though, was Rose Red. Oh, yeah, that would have and been And if I had thought about it, honestly, that would have been on my list. And I yeah, didn't put that on That would have been your premier tournament. But, but well, yeah, Rose Red would have been on my list. That was a good one. Uh, mine's Carrie. The old original Carrie, not okay. the... With Sissy Spacek. Yeah, not the new one. The, the old one. All mine's the old school ones, not the new remakes. Okay, my number 11 is E.T. And E.T. E.T. Now, see, I wouldn't consider that a Halloween type movie, but there is Halloween in it. Halloween's in it. Yeah. it yes, they go out trick-or-treating. Halloween is yeah. actually in E.T. That's true. Um, mine's American Werewolf in London. We watched that together. Yeah, and it's still not ago. that long ago, and it, yeah. it's still a pretty decent movie. Yeah. It's kind of cheesy when you it look back at some, but a lot of these older movies are kind of cheesy. Okay, uh, my number 10 is Hotel Transylvania, which is a cartoon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. I, mine's all scary stuff. Oh. Um, Mary Shelley's uh, Frankenstein. The Ooh, one with, I forgot um, about that. That would have, um, see, that would have been Is it Robert Downey Jr.? No, no. Well, it's not. Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro. That would have definitely been yeah. on my list. Yeah, because see, I was looking at a Halloween movie list, and that wasn't on there. It's like, wait a minute, that's that's a really good movie. Why didn't they have that on there? The other one that yes. I've got on here, uh, way up on my list, wasn't on that list I was looking at either. Definitely Halloween Town would have been knocked off the list because Mary Shelley Frankenstein would have been on here. Yeah, Rose good. Red would have been on here. So you can see that this yeah. isn't the perfect <laughs> list. Um, okay, my number nine is Practical Magic. It's, a, it's funny how yours are all... The, the family Halloween. But then practical magic crazy. gets dark. It does. It does get kind of. It dark. does get dark. <laughs> it does. I mean, it starts out all all sunshine and roses, but it gets dark it real quick. Uh, my number nine is Return of the Living Dead. Oh. That was the you talk about cheesy. That was really cheesy. That's the one where they nuked uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Oh really? I just gave the end. I'm sorry. Well, if you haven't watched haven't it since seen the it by 80s. Now, Okay, uh, my number eight is the original Halloween with Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, my number eight's Beetlejuice. Oh, uh, that's, yeah, that's a good see, one. See, that's a feel good movie. See, yeah, see. Uh, my number seven is Hocus Pocus. That was the one I was thinking that's similar to the very first, the Halloween Town. Those are kind of, oh, you know, yeah. it's fairly plain. Um, mine's Friday the 13th. Okay. I like Friday the 13th yeah, too. The first one. I know the, the, most of the other ones that followed up, I didn't really, they were okay, but I like the first one. Yeah. Uh, my number six was Corpse Bride. Yeah, I, that's a cute one. Yeah. Uh, mine's It, the new ones. Oh, yeah. Good. We haven't seen the second one. We haven't watched the second one yet. Um, number five is The Shining. So I had the book, The Shining, and now I have the movie, The Shining, the one with Jack Nicholson. Yeah. Even though the one the with Jack version. Nicholson doesn't follow the book, I still like that version of the movie better than the one they did for, I think, for TV was the it other was one. It was for TV. Yeah. Okay. Um, Silence of the Lambs. I like Silence of the Lambs, and it is creepy. It's not really uh, scary, with but Anthony it's creepy. Hopkins. Yeah. Yeah, it's very creepy. Yeah, it rubs the lotion on its skin. Yeah, it's it's creepy. Um, 
My number four is Bram Stoker's Dracula. My number four is Bram Stoker's Dracula. No way! That's, <laughs> that's the first amazing. one that we've gotten the same. Yeah, that's funny. Um, and that wasn't on the list I was looking at either. And we have both very recently talked about we need to watch that again. Yeah, because there was a show we watched that had that music in it. Yeah, what dun, was that? Dun, dun, dun. Oh, American Horror Story. Yeah, yeah for Horror some Story reason, we had watched, uh, we watched the first season of American Horror Story and they used that music. Kill, they used uh, the Kill Bill. Kill Bill. They used the Psycho music. Mm -hmm. And some people might not realize that they, which Psycho would have been a good one. To I had that Psycho list. and I marked it out. Um, they use the psycho music from like where she's driving in the car, Marion Crane. And she's you wouldn't even know it. Car, and you wouldn't have known one. it. Yeah, you'd have to watch it. Like I've seen Psycho like a million times uh, because I love uh, Norman Bates. Um, but uh, yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't have known that. But we're like, why did they reuse this music and put it in American Horror Story? Why didn't they come up with something original? Psycho would have been a great one to put on my yeah, list. I so my list online. could have been a lot longer. Yeah, than I had it on there, but I ended up deleting it. Um, were we on number three? That was number four. We both agreed oh, on number, number four. four. Yeah. So my number three, I put, you're probably not going to agree with this being a Halloween movie, but I put Harry Potter. The H Harry Potter and... Could be. Uh, yeah, because they celebrate Halloween and they have the the uh, they have the uh, Halloween party and stuff like that. To me, I just I. I said Silence of the Lambs, which is just creepy. It's right. not really scary. So yeah, yeah, it's fun. My number three is The Shining. The okay. Jack Nicholson. So we both 19, had it on the list. 1980 is when that came out. And my number two is The Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, we're not gonna match them up. Top two. Uh, mine is The Thing from 1982. Definitely not matching that. No, that's... Um... I've never even seen that. <sighs> the Thing? Oh, The Thing's awesome. Who is in the thing? Um, the thing? I can't think of his name. Kurt Russell. Is it like The Mist? The Thing? No, The Thing. I just have, we'll have to watch it now. I'll have to make her watch it. it sounds, She'll have to watch it during the day, though, because really, it will creep her out. It will? Really? You think so? Yeah. Even though it's It's kind of sci-fi. It sounds cheesy. Okay, it's kind of in the same line as Aliens. Well, that wouldn't freak me out at night. I don't think it well, would. Well, this is not... Well, we'll see. <laughs> anyway, mine's the thing. The the 80s version. You have to watch that. The old, old version is, is good, but it's kind of plant-based. It's kind of weird, so I didn't really like it as much. with the newer ones. Plant-based? Like Little Shop of Horrors plant-based? No, you just, you just have to watch. Okay, now my number one is Beetlejuice. My number one's Halloween. For oh, the original, yeah. yeah. So you didn't have uh, The Nightmare have, Before Christmas on yours. I didn't because... Um, now, do I you consider didn't. The Nightmare Before Christmas a Halloween movie? See, or I Christmas? always considered it more of a, not a Halloween movie. I think it's a Halloween movie, too. That's why I mean, I'm surprised it's not on your list. Yeah, but that, that's not as good as some of the other movies, I think. Uh, right. Um, well, <clears throat> yeah, definitely the list could have been longer. But I mean, The Nightmare Before Christmas, I mean... Technically, I guess it could be a Christmas movie because it ends at Christmas, but the characters... But he goes are, back to Halloween. But all the characters are all wrapped around Halloween, Halloween. so that's why I always... I think it's Halloween. a Halloween movie. It's kind of yeah. like the argument is a Die Hard a, a Christmas movie. It's like, well, it has Christmas in it, so technically... It has, people consider it a Christmas yeah, movie. Yeah, even though they're not celebrating Christmas in it, I would... I would still consider yeah, it. Yeah, that takes place at Christmas, but how, Nightmare for Christmas to me will always be a Halloween movie. Yeah. So, so okay, now and we, it's kind of creepy, you know. Yeah, it's Jack Skellington. Yeah. Uh, Oogie Boogie. Um, okay, now we have our top 12 favorite Christmas movies. So, same thing, you won't hear TV shows like Rudolph the Red Nosed right, Reindeer, right. stuff like that, because yeah. these are movies. So, uh, my number 12 is. I had to add the last two because I didn't realize. And I'm sure I've forgotten some. My number 12 is White Christmas. Uh, mine's It's a Wonderful Life. Okay. I don't even have that on my list. I didn't either until you said it had to be 12, not 10. And I put it on there. Well, I didn't... That's not a movie I would now. watch every year, but it's a good movie. I, I think it's a good movie. My number 11 is The Bishop's Wife. I saw that on that list, and I thought about putting it, and it's like, it was good. I mean, we own The Bishop's Wife, and a lot of people have probably never seen it. I think it was it's out in, like, movie. the 40s. Yeah. It's a black and white, but I just really like it. I think it's a feel-good movie. Was it movie. black and white? Yeah, black and white. I thought it was colorized. Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, mine's Miracle on 40, 34th Street, but the old one. 
Um, Not the newer ones, the old one. I like both of them. I like the newer one and the old one. I like one. the newer one. Like but if I'm going to watch it. Didn't it have Matilda in it? The girl who played Matilda yes, in the new one? I thought yeah. so. If I'm going to watch it, I'm going to watch the older one because that's the original. Yeah, that's the classic. That's the classic. And he looks so, like Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah, so that's the one I'm going to choose is the classic one. Um, my number 10 is Elf. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I'm curious what your top one's going to be. I'm Surviving Christmas. It's, it's the one where they um, where he hires a family. He's rich, Ben Affleck. He's really wealthy. And oh, hires... okay. I thought it was funny. Okay. Uh, my number nine, you can tell I didn't put that on my list. Uh, my number nine is A Christmas Story with Ralphie. Yeah. You'll shoot your eye out. Uh, my number nine is Scrooged. With Bill Murray. Yeah, with Bill Murray. Uh, yeah. And I haven't watched it in years, but I always liked it. Yeah. Uh, my number eight is The Bells of St. Mary's. Oh, that's good. If I it, thought about it, I would have put that on mine. The Bells of St. Mary's is one of those that's I probably like, would have replaced Surviving Christmas. It's like, is it really a Christmas movie? The, the Bells of St. Mary's, but um, I consider it a Christmas movie. Well, so and it Christmas. has Bing Crosby, and yeah. it's absolutely fabulous. That would have probably replaced Surviving Christmas. Because Surviving Christmas is, is okay. It's not one of my favorites. But yeah. there wasn't a whole lot of Christmas movies. I looked through the list of... of Top 100, and there wasn't a whole lot of movies that would I would sit there and go, "Ooh, I really love that movie for Christmas." It's like, yeah, I could watch it. Um, anyway, um, my number eight is that what you did? Yeah. Um, Christmas with the Cranks. Okay. Uh, my number seven is Meet Me in St. Louis. Judy Garland. Yeah, I guess it's loosely Christmas. Uh, that's where she sings, "Have yourself a merry little Christmas." Yeah. She's wearing the red dress. She looks gorgeous. It takes place at Christmas. That's where they have the red paper bell hanging down in the, the living room. And that's why I bought red paper bells from eBay. And I have them hanging down in here. Yes. Yes. I love it. Uh, my number seven is the Christmas Carol. The 1996 version with Patrick Stewart. Okay. Um, what are we on? Six. Number six is Holiday Inn. Yeah, love, only love, one love. small part of that's Christmas, though, at the very end. But it's considered a Christmas movie. Is it? Yeah, because they go through they go through all the holidays. They do all, and it ends at Christmas. That's why so. it's a terrific movie to watch yeah. because they no go spoilers through, here. That's a very old movie. <laughs> they, it's oh yeah, it's a very old movie. But they go through all the holidays. They they decide yeah. that they're going to start this in. And they're only going to be open at, at holiday. Yeah, they're only going to be open at holiday. So on Valentine's Day, they're going to be open on the 4th of July, on Easter. Everybody comes to this holiday inn and they have this special uh, musical act and they sing and they dance and it's uh, terrific and they eat food and yeah, it's awesome. Now, my number six is White Christmas. Okay. So I did have White Christmas on. And Mine's actually higher well, than yours. Yeah, I was going to say that's funny because mine was 12. Yeah. Um, I, like, I like White Christmas. So, my number five is Home Alone. Home Alone. Really? We matched. We matched every once in a while. I used to own the soundtrack for Home Alone, too. I love the music. Mm -hmm. uh, the song, Somewhere in My Memory, all of the songs are, are so beautiful. Um, if you've never really paid attention to the music, that's one a good one to listen to. It is. Number four. Uh, what was your number five? Oh, I'm on. We're oh, on. we matched. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number four is Christmas Vacation. Yeah, mine's Love Actually. Which okay. I'm sure that's your number one. I can guess. <laughs> um, I love Christmas Vacation. And so, we yeah. Watch it every and year. Love Actually is one that we watch every single year. Yeah. Um, three. Number three is Christmas with the Cranks. Yeah, mine's Elf. Um, I love Christmas with the Cranks. It's very funny. Um, it's hilarious. It has Jamie Lee Curtis and what's his name? Tim the Tool Man? Tim Allen. Tim Allen. And uh, her and it's Tim something. Trying to get that honey ham and That's awesome. uh, it did just the whole thing. Is, and him, him fixing to tell them that they're going on vacation. He goes, get ready. And she goes, ooh, it's not even Saturday. And she's like unbuttoning her shirt and getting ready. Yeah. And he comes in there to tell her he wants to go on vacation. It was just Every year, we've we've gotten to where we watch that movie every single yeah. year. So, so my number three was Elf. Was Elf? I like that movie too. Um, I do too. And they sing uh, where they sing uh, "Baby It's Cold Outside." Mm -hmm. uh, Zoe Deschanel. Yeah. I think she's got a very good voice. She does. 
Uh, my number two is uh, A Christmas Carol with Patrick Stewart. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, and so that was what on your list? Number seven. The only reason it wasn't higher is it's got, it. it's got some moments in it that drag out a little bit. We watch it but every, we watch it every year. year. It is but my favorite good. version. I love it. It's, I love it Patrick is Stewart. Version. Yes. Uh, a Christmas Story is my number two. Oh, okay. With Ralphie. With Ralphie. You'll shoot your eye out. No. Uh, my number one is Love Actually. You were right. I love Love Actually. Yeah. And it is, it's an adult movie. It, um, it's uh, a cr very crude in parts, and uh, but the whole cast of the movie mm, they is job. brilliant, absolutely brilliant, and there are so many different things going on in this movie that, uh, yeah, to me, it is perfect. Mine's Christmas Vacation. Oh, with Chevy yeah. Chase, yeah. Yeah, and Christmas Vacation was... was um, my number one for many many years until we saw love actually and then once love actually came along that took over so i tell you all this every time uh please if you're interested if any of these subjects interested you put your uh favorites in the comments below uh like i've said before you all usually name something that we've never heard of before that we've never seen and always like especially like in the united kingdom you might have movies over there that that we never, haven't never come over yeah that, that might not have come over here you might have got have halloween movies over there that, that we might not have heard of so let us know and then we can look them up and and other people there are other people, not just Kevin and I enjoy reading your comments. Other people are reading the comments too. And it's actually fun to, to hear everyone else's list. So I hope you all have a really good week and thanks for watching.